The Herd starts now. Undisputed. Ah, here we go on a Thursday. This is The Herd, wherever you may be and however you may be listening. We're on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Looking at my guest list, just got just got in the chair a little late today. Joy Taylor is joining me on a Thursday. Joy, how are you? I'm great. Good morning. Well, we've got uh, uh, the dust has settled and all this free agency stuff. We also have some good NFL stories. We have a breaking NFL story I'll get to in about five minutes here. Uh, we've, we've got some football stuff seeping in, and we'll kind of segue into football here in the next couple of weeks when camps open. Uh, but the dust has settled with all these free agents, and everybody now is, you know, making lists and who's good and who's not. And, uh, you know, Boogie Cousins said yesterday, uh, this, this team on paper is unbelievable. This is a great. Now, remember how players see basketball. Players love Russell Westbrook. He doesn't play winning basketball. Players love Island Iverson. He doesn't play winning basketball. Players love talent. You know, they like guys in the gym. Players never brag about Kiki Vandaway or Alex English. Uh, you know, players just like talent. Coaches like fit. That's what coaches like. Coaches like stuff that fits together. It's a big crossword puzzle. Bill Belichick isn't enamored with talent. Bill Belichick's enamored with what fits with Tom Brady. Players love just talent. Guys who can play, even if they're way past their prime. As I've said, the Lakers are a movie poster. I'm not sure if it's going to be a good movie. But it's interesting. Uh, Frank Vogel yesterday is talking about the Lakers roster. I'm just not as high on it as everybody else is. I think the Clippers are better. The Warriors are better. I think the Jazz pieces fit better. I think the I think Denver could be better. I think the Lakers, again, I'll, it's a I would say strange. If the Lakers were a movie, they would have two stars and seven Christopher Walkins. That's what it would be. It's a lot of strange. You ever go to a circus as a kid? And there was a trapeze, and there was the giraffe, and then over in the corner they had the tent with the guy with seven fingers and the bearded lady. There's a lot of that with this Lakers. You have guards that can't shoot for Jean Rondo. You have a two guard in KCP two years ago that had so many personal problems, he wore an ankle bracelet. JaVale McGee's fun but quirky. Boogie Cousins struggles to get along with people. You have a great defensive big in AD, an atrocious one in Boogie Cousins. You have Danny Green, who, by the way, can shoot but can't create anything. It's a roster full of size and shooters, but the juice is all LeBron James. He's the juice. He hopefully makes it all work. But if you just start looking at this thing, there's a lot of weird, and because they waited for Kawhi Leonard, they got a lot of used parts. A guy's past their prime, got to overpay for guy, weird body guy, Jared Dudley, Quinn Cook, too small guy, KCP, too much drama guy, Boogie can't defend guy. It's a it's an odd part with two stars. It reminds me a lot, to be honest with you, of that Seattle Seahawks team a couple years ago that didn't have an offensive line, didn't really have a go-to running back, didn't have a respectable tight end, had a couple of decent receivers, and it was Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner on each side of the football, and then a bunch of strange. And Russell Wilson was the only guy that had any juice. And so and the whole season, he led the team in rushing. He led it in touchdowns. He led, Russell Wilson led it in everything. And he was just trying to make all these weird, disparate parts work. And the, by the way, they were 9-7 and because Russell Wilson's amazing. He's unbelievable. He's one of the greatest players in the history of the NFL, not just at his position in the league. And he got to 9-7, and seven, but it's the only year he didn't make the playoffs. It's the only year because he, he was the only guy that really had any juice. And then Bobby Wagner was the one guy in the defensive end that had juice. Then it was a lot of guys you were hoping you just lost Richard Sherman. And he was at the end of his career. And there were injuries. It, it didn't work. And it just, it, that's what it reminds me of. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I think it's a great movie poster. Utah's pieces fit. Clippers pieces fit. Philadelphia pieces fit. I think Boston pieces fit. Warriors pieces fit. Even D'Angelo Russell, I think, fit. You have. I was. I was thinking about this this morning. You have so many strange pieces. They're just too small, too old. Can't defend. Defends great. Defends atrociously. Shoots but can't create. Your best ball handler, Rondo, can't shoot. Your best shooter isn't really a great ball handler or creator, Danny Green. So remember, players. Love Westbrook because players love guys who can ball. They go into a gym, they sit down, they watch, and they're like, look at that guy. Michael Jordan loves Westbrook. Michael Jordan's a horrible general manager. Remember that? He's terrible. Players like one thing. Coaches like fit. 
That's what coaches like. They like fit. That's why Brad Stevens is obviously a great coach, but the Kyrie thing didn't work because Kyrie didn't fit the other pieces, though Kyrie was easily the most talented. And in the end, it didn't work for either person. So I, I never, how many great players in NBA history have been great GMs? Larry Bird, that's about it. So what players see is the movie poster. I get it. I like movie posters. I like movie trailers. What the coach see, what the GM see is usually, can these pieces work? And when you waited for Kawhi forever, you know, you ended up kind of taking some odd players. You overpay for Danny Green, and Warriors didn't really want to pay Quinn Cook. And Jared Dudley's kind of shot, but he's a good guy and a good leader, but he can't defend. And either can Boogie Cousins, and there's injuries, and Boogie's not getting a lot of offers, I was told, and then suddenly became a Laker. And JaVale McGee I like, actually. I think he's funny and quirky, and but he's a little different. And as one NBA executive said about this team, <laughs> it's LeBron AD and a bunch of, I think Joy said this, specialists. There's a lot of specialists. Specialists work for Russell Wilson in Russell's prime because he's filthy good. LeBron's not in his prime. LeBron's in his 17th year. So once again, yesterday was funny because Frank Vogel, I had a story three days ago. LeBron is the point guard. Frank Vogel's like, no, he's not. Here's Frank Vogel. Very positive. Um, you know, it, it became very clear that, uh, you know, I was going to have the, the support of my best player in, in LeBron. There's no decisions made on our starting lineup. Um, no imminent plan to start LeBron at the point guard spot. Uh, a lot of different uh, lineups and combinations have this, have been discussed, but it's, it's really way too early for any of that. Um, he'll be a primary ball handler uh, in our system the same way he has been uh, his entire career, but we're certainly not going to ask him to, to do anything that he hasn't uh, done his entire career. So this is interesting. So the <laughs> it would be like saying with Russell Wilson, well, he's going to be the... Not going to be a running back for us, but Russell Wilson led the Seahawks in rushing. So what you're saying is, well, we're not going to ask LeBron to be a true point guard, but he's going to handle the ball all the time. Well, hell, he better. He's the only guy with juice on this offense. I mean, Anthony Davis, he doesn't create shots for others. Danny Green doesn't create shots for others. Rondo's past his prime and can't shoot. Jared Dudley, similarly. Quinn Cook, too small. There's one guy. He's, this is Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. He's the juice. And Russell in his prime made it happen. But even that team had a low ceiling. So I just see the Lakers as odd, disparate parts that make a great movie poster. But I don't think it clicks. Maybe it does over time. They make moves at the trading deadline. But but don't, don't be confused. I, I read on Twitter about a week ago. It was a funny line. They said, God, this team would have been great four years ago. <laughs> four years ago, Boogie would he, what, didn't have two injuries. And LeBron was in his prime. And... Four years ago, Danny Green's young, and you're like, okay, now, this is not. This is old in weird spots and can't shoot in weird spots and shoot and can't do anything else in weird spots. So I, I like four or five teams better than the Lakers, even though I do think they're really talented. We'll see how it plays out. Now, uh, we're getting to a point now where some NFL news will start breaking here. And here's a story, and uh, the world is changing in the NFL for one position. Actually, the world's changing for every position except one position, running back. If you look at what's happening in football in the National Football League, everything's safer, right? There's less hitting in practice. There's less practice. You can't hit quarterbacks. You can't hit wide receivers and tight ends above the shoulders. They're thinking about taking away the kickoff. If you talk to coaches inside the league, the Rams barely hit during the regular season. I was talking to a USC coach last year, and he's like, by September, we stop hitting at practice. Okay, the game is getting safer, obviously, because it needs to get safer. New rules, new equipment, less hitting, less practice. Melvin Gordon, running back for the Chargers, one year left in his deal, said, I'm not showing up. I want a new contract. Now, I don't like guys breaking contracts, but here's what's interesting about the running back position. It is the last inevitably violent position in football. Everybody's getting hit less, less hitting at practice, except running back. And Melvin Gordon's entering the last year of his deal. He's a two-time pro bowler. He's very, very good. And he's sort of saying what Le'Veon Bell did. Um, I'm getting up to be like 28. And I don't want to practice as much. And I don't want to get hit in the offseason. And if you don't get the right pieces around me and I don't get the right money, I don't want to play. Running backs in the NFL are the only position no longer protected by rules. They're no longer protected by the culture of the game. Quarterbacks now, bubble screens, three steps, get it out, don't get hit. 
They just don't get hit as much. Wide receivers. I mean, there, there are so many rules now about when you can hit a wide receiver, and the answer is almost rarely. Tight ends don't get banged up as much. Offensive linemen don't grind like they used to. It's more of a passing league than a running league. It's just holding your block for a second, letting a guy go. So here you have a running back. It's the one position in the NFL running back with a timer on it. And Melvin Gordon played four years of college and got hit for four years. I mean, he was the guy at Wisconsin, right? And they run the football. Then he goes to the Chargers, and he's the guy for four years that gets banged on. So he's now... He's now a couple years away from the cliff year in the NFL for running backs, 28 years old. He's, he's one year away from the cliff. This is the position with a timer. Even Todd Gurley, you watch him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's getting close. Watch out. We thought he was in his prime. So running backs have become the brake pads of the NFL. You can buy the very best. There is a timer on brake pads. And you're seeing it now with Ezekiel Elliott. You're seeing it with running backs around the league. They want.